Happy Saturday! So I think today's kind of going to be primarily a respond to your video yesterday sort of video. And because I feel like it, we're going to go monochrome. So step one involves that whole music is indicative of who you are sort of thing. I got a little bashful at first, thinking, oh, gee, well, I listen to nerdy stuff. I wonder what that says. Anglerfish, Doctor Who, Harry Potter, the solar system, things like that. And then you ended up talking about it's more your, the broadness of your tastes than anything like that. And then I almost felt better. Except that I didn't really feel bad to begin with. I like being a nerd. But then you went on to talk about the different genres after all. And apparently nerd is not a genre, but I don't agree with this. At the same time, I suppose it's rather obvious what nerd music would indicate about your personality, because you listen to songs about this book, or science, or literature, and things like that. Certain musicals. So I guess <laughs> that one doesn't need a study because it is obvious in its own way. Two! So you mentioned McCain liking ABBA, and I could only think of, I wonder if he went to the midnight showing of Mamma Mia. And then I thought, I wonder if he hated Pierce Brosnan as much as we do. Number three. As for Irish music, uh, the first band that comes to my head is Caper Kai? I have no idea how to actually pronounce it, but it's spelled C-A-P-E-R-C-A-I. L L I E. But they've got a lot of they've got a wide variety. They're a mm, modern band, but they've got purely instrumental songs. They have ones entirely in Gaelic. They have ones entirely in English. Uh, just a little smattering of everything. It's just very pretty music. They have pretty lyrics, and well, really anything sounds gorgeous in Gaelic. Number four. I love how, due to your horror take on my flat and flat mate, and the horror buying tags that you gave the video, I don't know what anybody else got, but when I watched your video, half of the thumbnails for the related videos were of the It Clown. Number five? Yeah, I lost count. I think it was five. It was doing so well, too. Uh, today I spent wandering around, going into the more, uh, commercial bookstores and seeing if they had jobs. One said rolling and had gave me an application, and another said to apply online, but they do have a job, some jobs, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping, just going into the bookstores is like, oh, I feel at home now. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I can handle a dining hall. I spent three and a half years as one, and I am comfortable enough, but there's something about books, and I like books. There's books, 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 books. Number six. Whee! Number seven. I still have a couple of leftover facts um, from crafts that I did at the library, and I just picked one at random. I didn't even- ah! I haven't even uh, opened up which one it is, so you can tell me. What is it? Oh, nope, you know what? I can read through the back. It's karaoke. So, that was for Manga Club. So basically, kata means empty, and orchestra means orchestra. You play a track with music, but no vocals, empty orchestra. Makes sense. Uh, the first karaoke ish thing came from the U.S. actually in the early 60s. The TV station NBC had a sing-along um, series TV thing going on called Sing Along with Mitch, where the host Mitch sang and the audience read lyrics off of a screen. Uh, they were usually the chorus, and that's how that went. Then later in the 60s, Filipino musicians started carrying on tour with them cassettes with background music but no singing, and that was called Minus One Music. That way they didn't have to pay uh, and travel with a band. Makes sense. Uh, 71, a, um, a Japanese guy named Daisuke Inui came into play. I'm not sure if Inui is how you pronounce that one. 
Uh, he was a musician for hire at events. People would ask him for tapes of his music so they could sing along when he wasn't there. And so he kind of started off making these primitive karaoke machines. And they were put into hotels and restaurants, and eventually there were straight-up places dedicated to karaoke. It's an expensive hobby, but it was popular. Uh, unfortunately, he never patented his invention. So the 80s come along, and a Filipino named Roberto Del Rosario jumped on getting a patent for his version. Court battles with a Japanese company, but kind of obviously, I guess, Del Rosario won and got his patents. Karaoke, um, I don't know, I mean, it doesn't spread as much or as far or as fiery um, in the U.S. or Canada, but in Japan, other parts of Asia, it's a real big hobby for anyone from bored teenagers to businessmen who just got off of a hard, you know, work day. So it's wide-reaching, but apparently it can be dangerous, too. Uh, within the last decade in the Philippines, uh, there were these my way killings where people in karaoke bars would get into these disputes over their different renditions of Frank Sinatra's my way, and half a dozen people have been killed over these disputes. So, I'm going to... I've watched a Professor Quatermass, Quatermass? I watched him in The Pit, and I think there's another movie, unless it's the same one, they just have different titles. But we're going to see, because one of my highly esteemed professors, apparently it's his favorite movie, so... I watched it. It's, I think, from the 50s, a British sci-fi. I was actually rather impressed with a lot of their graphics, their special effects. I mean, you could tell what they all were, but they were pretty ingenious, some of them. And it was just interesting. The end was like, really? That's, that's how you're ending it? It's a little desolate, <laughs> but the movie, it had some sort of like, it was Scientology's birth. <laughs> I don't actually know how old Scientology is, but it's, if it didn't stretch from the 50s, this had to have influenced its coming about. But it was good. So I'm going to put this up and then watch the other one while eating dinner. So, cheers!